Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking. Uh, as always, follow me on Instagram at Steve Halleck uh, or check out my website, TikToking.com. So it was pointed out to me that for all the Jorn videos I've done, I've actually never done a video on a resonance, which is, you know, maybe the most quintessential Jorn. Um, so here we go. I'll do one today. And I've also never done a video on a Ruthenium Edition piece. So here we have a Ruthenium Resonance. Um, so let's just dig right into it. First of all, the Ruthenium pieces were limited editions done in the early uh, 2000s. And they uh, featured the brass movements, but the movements themselves were coated in Ruthenium. And they had 40 millimeter cases. So at the time, Jorn only was doing 38 millimeter cases. So these were the first 40 millimeter cases. And in the case of, uh, for example, the tourbillon, it's the only old version tourbillon uh, in a 40 millimeter case. Uh, the resonance, of course, was made in the older version with the two same dials um, in the newer versions, but they have all gold movements. So this is the only version resonance that has a brass movement and is in a 40 millimeter case. But of course, the main feature with the ruthenium pieces is the dial which is uh, spectacular. It's maybe the coolest of the um, Jorn dials. You know, obviously early yellow gold dials are amazing and I'm particularly partial to black label dials, but there's something really special to these ruthenium dials. And um, basically the coolest part of them is that they change character a lot. So if you look at it like this, it almost looks like a black label. Like the dial looks very, very dark. Uh, but as soon as it catches the light, you can see there's a bunch of grain, and it's actually gray. And then when it has a lot of light, it's almost totally mirrored silver. So they're super playful on the wrist, and they have the qualities that a lot of people look for in the best of the early gold dials. Uh, most uh, There is a little bit of variance within the ruthenium pieces, but not as much as there is in the gold dial pieces. Most of them are nice and grainy and shiny and uh, pretty beautiful. Now, of course, that does mean that some of them are prone to picking up oxidation, like uh, the early gold pieces. Uh, but this particular example you can see is, is perfectly clean and looks like a brand new watch. So, uh, okay, let's get into the resonance itself. Basically, uh, this was developed by uh, Francois Paul Jorn as a nod to a uh, an early, uh, I believe it was a pocket watch that he was into that used this uh, resonance idea. And the idea is basically, you have two separate movements pretty much joined together, and then the balances are close enough that they actually get into uh, resonance with each other, and it keeps them synced to each other. Now, there's been a lot of sort of um, controversy within the watchmaking community, whether this really works or doesn't work. And it's pretty difficult to actually prove. Uh, Mr. Jorn obviously is, is pretty convinced it's, it's right. Uh, Philippe Dufour, who made the duality, which has two balances also, but they're linked with a center differential, um, uh, something that Max uh, MBNF did with the LM2. He famously said when Francois Paul came out with this that he had a great idea, but it was missing a few pieces. Uh, to, talking about how basically, like in his mind, there's no way that the balances can actually get into resonance with each other without being coupled in some way. Um, but the watches do seem to uh, to work. I mean, basically, what you have is the crown changes the time for each of these. They're independently set. So uh, it winds and then sets the time. You turn it one way for one and one way for the other. I'm not gonna do it right now. Um, but then this crown pulls out and it sinks the seconds hands, okay? So they sync up and actually very, very rarely come unsynced. It does happen sometimes. And of course, when the power reserve starts coming down, all bets are off. But as long as the watch stays pretty well wound, uh, every resonance I've had stays pretty close to synced. 
So that maybe is some sort of evidence that the resonance uh, does work in some way. Uh, but undeniably, what it does do is create a beautiful movement, uh, really one of the coolest layouts and looks of, of any movement ever. A beautiful dial. I particularly like the symmetrical dial. Uh, I'm not as big a fan of the newer resonances that have the 24-hour uh, hand or whatever they have. Um, but And you also get independently set two time zones, which can be nice to have. Normally, when I wear resonances, I keep them set to the same time. Uh, this one I just wound up without setting it at all. But normally I'll keep them set to the same time. I think that looks better, unless I particularly need it while traveling or something like that. Uh, so, let's see, what else can we do with this? Ah, one kind of other controversial point of a resonance that's a bit of a quirk of owning one is they can be a little bit tricky to wind. And this depends some on the piece. The 40 millimeter pieces tend to be a little bit easier in my mind to wind than the 38s. And also on the strap. Some straps are a little bit thicker up here and they can get so close to the crown that you can't even pull it out basically to set the time. Um, it's mitigated to some extent. This was one of the original straps that's supposed to be on this piece, but the newer Jordan straps have quick release bars. And sometimes uh, on my other resonance, I'll actually take the strap off when I'm fully winding and setting it because it's just easier. And with the quick release, it's easy, you know, you can just pull it off. Um, but this one actually, because of the 40 millimeter case, the old strap, there's plenty of space here and this one's not a big deal to wind up, right? Um, so you do also have the Jorn Power Reserve, which of course is backwards from everybody else. Instead of showing how much uh, time it has left, it shows how many hours since you last wound it. So at full wind, it goes to zero and it shows you that you last wound it zero hours ago. Uh, let's, let's give it to you on the wrist here, right? All right, there we go. So you can see, absolutely stunning watch. I mean, to me, FP Jean is at their best with the resonance and the tourbillon. Uh, and the resonance is, is the most unique piece in the collection. And it's just, it's just a killer watch. You can't go wrong with any version. Um, this ruthenium is, is kind of particularly stunning and I think one of the most versatile um, because it really works on a bunch of different kinds of straps, colored straps. But uh, God, I don't know what else there is to say about this. You, you just can't really make a better watch. You know, you can have different watches and different opinions and different color preferences and whatever, but uh, it'd be hard pressed to make a good case that a watch was categorically better than this watch. Uh, it sort of ticks all the boxes. The proportions are amazing. Uh, every, everything is just, is just great. So these are definitely uh, one of my super all-time favorites. This is a great version of it. They're getting very hard to find. Um, beautiful dial. And that's it. This is the François Paul Journe Chronomètre uh, Résonance in the limited edition ruthenium version, and I hope you enjoyed it.